a book. Going to talk about this book for a minute. I will probably refer to it more often in the future. Uh, let me get this straight here. Okay. Anatoly Fomenko, Russian educator, in the true sense of the word educator. Somebody that's got knowledge, acquired knowledge, through contrarian thinking. History, fiction or science is the title of the book. Anatoly Fomenko, what I held up. Bombshell, revisionary, visionary, revisionary. Talking about how the history we have become to believe, we have come to believe, is false, all of it. The chronology of our history is false, completely fabricated for a reason. I'm about halfway through. He hasn't gone into that yet. <clears throat> but I can well imagine because a person can be con completely controlled and manipulated through the information that we're being fed. So if we're being fed information that is erroneous, for whatever means, reasons uh, there are behind this, whatever somebody has planned to do with us to keep us misinformed the way they have through this information of erroneous history, give you an example, just a quick thing that really shoots out from this book first of all. History, particularly ancient history, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, the time frame of this history according to Fomenko is not 5,000 years ago but more likely somewhere between 500 and 800 years ago, somewhere in that range, the Middle Ages, uh, 1400 years ago, starting maybe the fifth century of the Common Era uh, to the Middle Ages into the Renaissance. Most of the things that we've believed to have occurred two, three thousand years ago actually only occurred six, seven, eight hundred years ago. And just as a quick example, like a two little things that come right out of the book. We know about the Phoenicians. I remember when I was a kid in grade nine or ten, whatever the history was, I think it might have been war history, like First World War, but anyway, we heard about the Phoenicians, these marvelous travelers on the seas, these traders, these people that were involved in uh, commerce all over the Mediterranean and making things work, the hustlers of money and merchandise. Well, these Phoenicians came out of a city called Tyre. Uh, I think there was another one, Sidon or something like that, another city uh, somewhere along the Mediterranean coast. Well, if you go to those cities, they're basically rat holes that no boat could ever have uh, been launched from. The rivers are too shallow. There was no docking in these places. Now, Fomenko says it's interesting how words get kind of manipulated and confused by, uh, or can e people can easily be uh, manipulated with words. So let's just assume that Phoenician may actually have been Venetian, as in Venice, Venetian. <laughs> the place that I refer to about the uh, oligarchical reptile bankers who run stuff come out of Venice anyway, it makes sense. These were in fact not Phoenicians but Venetians doing all that trade and hustle. Interesting. Okay, Phoenicians, supposedly Greek era. No, it puts them much closer to our time now. The other thing, Fomenko brings up the uh, Thucydides, uh, the chronicler of the Peloponnesian Wars, the Greek Wars, what, 600 BC, something like that. Well, Thucydides was very accurate in his description of his time, 28 years, it spans 28 years what he's writing. I'm not familiar with his writing personally, but I'm going by Fomenko's uh, analysis. Thucydides talks about uh, lunar and solar eclipses at that time, whenever it occurred. So this particular, there were three eclipses in his chronicling of the Pe Peloponnesian War, seven years apart, one was 11 years apart, you know, the first was uh, supposedly, ac according to the chronologist called Scaligeri, the Scaligerian chronology in uh, Patavius, another one from the 1600s or 1500s, 
uh, 16th century chrono chronolo chrono chronologists, I guess. They put this history together for us, and that's a whole other topic now, how they arrived at the numbers, the dates related to the history that they feed us back. Anyway, this uh, Thucydides talks about three uh, lunar uh, and one so uh, two lunar and one solar eclipse during his period of time. Now, interestingly, these chronolo chronologizers at the time in the 1600s, 1500s, didn't conceive of computers being able to recreate the supposed eclipses. You know, the models they have. Uh, there is a name for it. Uh, there's a computer sure sky or something like that. Uh, uh, some version of this, uh, I don't know what it exactly is called, but the, uh, I, I'll look it up if you want, uh, you know, I'll come back with this. Uh, they put the, uh, this, these three eclipses that Thucydides, uh, Thucydides talks about. Uh, you can see I'm pretty excited. This is amazing. It's like I've always known this, that this history we've been fed is garbage. It's crap. It comes out of the Vatican. It's what, what's a great advantage to them to create a Christ story 2,000 years ago. All of this is bullshit as crap. It's much more recent. You know, Rome didn't disappear uh, for, in 400 AD. It was around in 12 or 1300. Anyway, the empire I'm talking about. So, okay, here you got these eclipses, very specifically observed by Thucydides, and the dates of these, obviously he didn't write this is uh, 500 and something BC or 530 BC, he wrote when he saw these eclipses. So we can backtrack through this computer programming to see which eclipse he's talking about. And in order for this to be correct, these, the interesting, the triad of these eclipses need to be, this is beautiful, it's not just one eclipse, it's three you can refer to. This computer program that ran the description of these uh, eclipses shows us that in fact it's not 538 a, uh, BC where this eclipse was supposed to have occurred, but it more likely, more likely was two dates. One was sometime around, uh, uh, I think he said uh, uh, 400 AD, 4, 500 AD, the other one, 1100 of the Common Era AD. Now, that puts Thucydides, the Peloponnesian Wars, possibly two dates where these eclipses occurred. Two dates. Somewhere, you know, in the Middle Ages or in the more recent, uh, closer to the Renaissance time. Is that fascinating or what? This book, this book is a must read for anyone who does not want to be trapped in erroneous history. This is fabulous. And I need to thank again Cliff High. He alerted me to this book. He made a comment about this fellow. And it's unraveling things incredibly. There's so much stuff here. And it's pretty exciting. History completely, completely, totally revised to where it actually should be based on factual evidence. There's so much here to talk about, it's incredible. I just thought I'd introduce it right now. <laughs>